Hello everybody, my name is Tony, and I'm here with the Everyday Counts program. And today we have an hour together for chair yoga. So making sure that you've got a comfortable and stable chair and you've got a whole lot of space around you so you don't bump yourself when you're moving. And today I have a yoga block with me. I'm not expecting anybody to have a yoga block, but you can substitute this with a book all we're going to be doing is holding it in the flat of our hands, so something that is comfortable and light for you to hold, um, and something you can hold with the flat of your hand rather than kind of gripping, um, and it doesn't have to be heavy, that's not what it's about. So um, if you want to pause this and go and get something that makes sense to you, then please do. Otherwise, let's get started. So if you need to sit into the back of your chair because that's more comfortable for the support of your back, please do. Otherwise, I encourage you to come forward somewhat. That way we start to get um, the core of our body engaged, which is what helps our posture and what strengthens through our spine. And that's what we're gonna be focusing on today, our spine. So making sure your feet are a comfortable distance apart for you rooting down through those feet, even spreading the toes wide if that feels comfortable for you. And get it connected downwards to the support underneath you. If you like, soften your gaze or close your eyes and really send your awareness down to the soles of your feet, to that support underneath you. And notice if you're putting more weight into one foot than the other, your heel or the ball of your feet or your toes, or if your toes are scrunched in any way, and see if you can allow your feet to relax as much as you're able to. From there, sending your awareness to your seat. Again, you can close your eyes or soften your gaze. Your awareness to where your seat meets the chair. Noticing if you're sitting more into one sit bone or the other. If you're sliding more towards the back of your pelvis or you're sliding more to the front. And see if you can even that up as best as it feels comfortable for you. Sitting deeply into that seat and allowing the weight of your legs to rest in the soles of your feet. So we get that connection downwards to gravity. And from there, we're lifting up through the spine. The spine goes all the way up through the base of your skull and the crown of the head as an extension of the spine as it lifts up towards the sky. Shoulders are soft and away from the ears and as always, collarbones are wide, but a softness there too. So we're not kind of jamming anything. Allow a full breath in when you're ready. Exhale it out if you haven't already. Please soften or lower your gaze or even close your eyes and take another few long mindful breaths like that. On the exhale, allowing yourself to relax and soften into this support underneath you, into this posture always making allowances to adjust or adapt anything that feels better for you. Noticing if your shoulders are over your hips or if they're further back over your hips or in front, and notice what feels best. And it's gonna be different for each and every one of us. Visualize, imagine, sense, or feel your spine from the base of your skull all the way down, connecting through your pelvis all the way down to the tip of the tailbone. And within that spine is the central nervous system. And the best tool we have for um, connecting to that nervous system is our breath. So notice how you feel in this moment. Notice the kind of energy level you're working with today. What's on your mind, any emotions that are present, just being witness to everything. 
and visualize, imagine, sense that spine within your body and start to imagine the breath like a traditional thermometer lifting up through the spine as we root to rise and on that exhale there's a settling back down so again like that traditional thermometer just imagining the breath lifting up through the spine any amount exhaling going all the way back down to your tailbone or to another point in the spine that makes sense to you so we've got this lifting on the inhale and settling down starting to get used to imagining the breath flowing up and down your spine imagine as if you could with that lifting and lowering of the breath through the spine imagine that your breath is filling the spine kind of like a hollow tube Notice if there are any places in the spine that the breath doesn't feel present. Without judgment, just with a curiosity. And see if you can even that breath out. So it fills the entire spine. Just imagine, sense, or feel that. Steadying the breath as best as you can. So it becomes smooth on the way in and smooth on the way out too. Mm -hmm. Rising and falling breath. We're going to root down through our feet and our seat and rise from there through the spine, through the crown of the head, keeping that breath within that spinal column. Imagine, sense, feel it rising and falling. Adding on to that, on the inhale, we'll lift the chin up. Maybe the uh, mouth opens. On the exhale, the chin draws down any amount. Inhaling up, exhaling down, and the movement being an extension of your spine. The steady inhale lifts the chin, the steady exhale draws it down. You can keep your eyes soft, closed, whatever's comfortable for you. Notice how this feels in your body, always doing only as much as feels comfortable for you. Nice. Next one. I'm going to keep that chin tucked down on the end of the exhale and just take a few breaths here. Awareness to the spine, awareness to any holding, any tension, softening as much as you can. And so we release as much tension as possible. And the next inhale, we'll lift up through the chin. This is the inhale to center on the exhale. We're going to turn to one side, but from the collarbones down, nothing's changing. Inhaling back to center and exhaling over to the other side hyper aware of that length of spine within you. Coming into the cervical spine, the neck here, as we take the head from side to side, trying not to get caught up in any stories, any stories as to the sensations that are arising or our range of motion, just paying attention, keeping the rest of the spine as still as possible. The next time we come back to center, we'll stay rooting down through that right arm, keeping it soft and soft joints here. Once again, rooting to rise the spine like 
that uh, visualization that we had earlier of rising up and lowering the breath through that spinal column on the inhale we're lifting up on the exhale we're circling that shoulder down seeing if we can keep the isolation in through the shoulder here so notice if you're taking your spine along with you see if you can keep the spine as neutral as possible and moving through the shoulder the breath is guiding you still that rising and falling use that rising of the inhale to lift the shoulder the exhale that grounding that drawing down and then we'll go in the opposite direction when you're ready noticing sensations noticing compensations in the body and give yourself a break here trying to allow yourself to do what is best for you not what you think is needed and so what feels right rather than what you think mm -hmm. the end of the exhale we're going to take that hand back to center left hand angles down easy joints once again rooting to rise Inhaling, lifting, exhaling, rolling down in whichever direction suits you. Slow and steady, that breath, that rising breath is lifting up through the shoulder, the exhale, drawing it down. Noticing what's happening in your body as you follow the movement, always resting when you need to. And then we'll take that round in the opposite direction. Again, allowing that spinal column to be as steady as possible and the movement to be there in and through the left shoulder. And at the end of the next exhale, we'll pause and take that left hand back to center. And I'm gonna take hold of my yoga block here and I'm going to take the palm of my, uh, take it in the palm of my hand and draw it down beside me this is the exhale rooting to rise so the steadiness in the spine and the inhale lifting the arm up exhale taking it down drawing the elbow back inhaling up and exhaling down noticing what's happening in your body mm -hmm. You can stay just like this. If you want to add on, an inhale up. When it gets to a comfortable place, we're gonna turn the heel of the hand forward and push that up. And on the exhale, we're going all the way down. On the inhale, there's that twizzle right in the middle. Exhaling all the way down. And again, not gripping onto that block, it's with a flat hand. And if you're looking at the block, hoping it's not going to fall, see if you can pick a space in front of you, fix your gaze, and allow the movement to be free flowing with the breath. Adding onto there at the top of that inhale, taking the fingertips towards the left side, reaching over, and then we get to tip to one side, supporting yourself with the chair. And on an exhale, we're coming all the way down. If that block falls, no big deal, just pick it up and start again. So there are lots of places you can stop along the way, you can rest. Notice what's happening in your spine. Keeping that awareness deep into the very core of your body, that spinal column. This is the last one. And taking the hand down. Flipping that over to the left palm. And here we are, palm facing up, elbow bent. On the inhale, we're reaching out and up. 
any amount, exhaling down, elbow comes back. Rooting to rise, so the spinal column is as steady as possible. Noticing what's going on in your body, if you're compensating by shifting at all. If you want to add on here, there's that twizzle. We're going to reach up and forward, take the fingertips back and pushing up towards the sky. Exhaling all the way back down. And this doesn't have to look like my movement, allowing yourself to adapt it, to change it, to suit your body. We're all put together differently and it doesn't have to look like anybody else's movement, but we're isolating through that shoulder as we have awareness to what's going on in the spine. The breath is still that rising up on the inhale. And that exhale, that settling down, slow and steady. Adding on, we're inhaling up, that swizzle. Fingertips swizzle towards the right, and here we are reaching, inhaling back to center, or sorry, exhaling back to center and down. Mm -hmm. Inhaling up and over, exhaling back to center. Mm -hmm. Another few. Again, you can always rest, you can adapt this, change this to what feels right for you. And on that last exhale, bringing that all the way down and then taking, or, um, taking any movements you need to release that. Now we're taking um, our awareness still into the spine and here we're going to do some cat and cows. So first option, hands on the thighs. On the inhale, we're drawing the hands back as the heart comes forward, elbows come back, shoulder blades come towards each other. On the exhale, fingertips, uh, we send the fingertips towards the knees, curl the belly in, draw the chin down. On the inhale, there's that lifting and up through the chin if you want to come into the neck. On the exhale, that drawing down. Doesn't have to be a big movement. Really aware of what's going on in your spine here. There's going to be places that feel really comfortable and places that feel less comfortable. Seeing if you can even the movement out with the steadiness of the breath. If you want to add on, then there's the tilting of the pelvis. On the inhale, we tend to send that tailbone out behind us. On the exhale, tucking the tail and sitting over onto the back of the pelvis. We're gonna get into the lower back that way. So inhaling and exhaling. As much or as little movement through the spine as feels good for you. But there's a steadiness and a smoothness to the movement. Mm -hmm. If you want to add on, I'm going to take those hands, interlace them on the inhale, draw the heart in towards the hands, the hands in towards the heart, extension through the spine, of course, is the lifting and the sending the tailbone out behind you. On the exhale, turn the palms away from you and round, pushing the palms away, inhaling, hands into heart, lifting exhaling, rounding through the spine, that's the flexion. Mm -hmm. So as much or as little movement as feels good for you. And again, this doesn't have to look a particular way. I'm simply allowing, um, I'm simply guiding you into the kind of movement that we're focusing on and you get to change that, adjust it to what suits you. I've got two more here. Last one. Staying for that exhale and then coming all the way back to center. Any softening movements you need to go ahead. Rooting to rise once more. 
awareness through that column, that spinal column within you, taking the breath up and down, allowing that to flow as steadily and as fluidly as you possibly can. Soften the gaze, close the eyes, go within and notice what you notice. Notice sensations, notice any awarenesses, any wisdom that comes up. Mm -hmm. You can stay here for as long as you like. Or we're going to take those hands down next to us, allow them to be soft and floppy through the joints. Allow the hands to be heavy drawing the shoulders over the hips and for some of us that'll be leaning forward for some of us that'll be leaning back rooting to rise this is the inhale and the exhale as right fingertips get a little closer towards the ground inhaling up and exhaling over to the other side allow this to be a free flowing movement to start with Mm -hmm. And then start to notice what's happening in your pelvis as you go to one side. Does the opposite hip lighten or sit bone lighten from the chair? If that's the case where it will be for most of us, see if you can keep those uh, both sides of the pelvis rooted as you move from side to side. And then we're really isolating into the range of motion of the spine. And one is not uh, better than the other, it's just different focus. When we root down through both sides of the pelvis, we're a little more limited in our range of motion because we're not getting the pelvis involved. And again, one is not better than the other. It's just a different focus. Two more either side, slow and steady never going to the point where you feel like you're collapsing and it's not controlled. And on that last exhale, we're coming all the way back up to center, keeping those hands dangling down, imagining that you're um, leaning up against the back of a wall, the back of your skull, shoulders, and the back of your pelvis. This is the inhale and the exhale. We're gonna shift the shoulders towards the one side Inhale back to center and shift the shoulders to the other side. Now, a lot of the time what we do is we come from the pelvis. So we're lifting and pushing through one sit bone. See if you can keep the pelvis rooted once more. And again, we're getting into the movement of the spine. Inhaling and exhaling, we're rooting down through both feet, both sit bones at the same time. We're just sliding those shoulder blades along the wall, that imaginary wall behind you. Getting that range of motion through the spine laterally. Two more, either side. Working with your breath, always resting when you need to, always doing less if it feels uncomfortable for you or not doing it at all. Okay, coming all the way back to center, take a big breath in and let's sweep those arms up. Exhale, allow them to float down and let's do two more of those with the breath. Exhaling, imagining that breath settling down at the base of your spine, last one as it reaches up all the way towards the crown of your head, base of your skull. Exhaling, settling down. Mm -hmm. And then any movements you need to, to relieve any tension, please go ahead. Now let's strengthen through the spine somewhat. So we're rooting to rise. And then from here, imagine drawing the front ribs in towards each other, and that's gonna draw you back a little. You may even notice the back of your ribs 
drawing out behind you somewhat and then just steady breath here again that lifting and lowering through the breath through that spinal column from here as if you have a laser pointer through the crown of your head reaching up towards the ceiling we're going to keep the spine in one long line and then circle as if we're drawing a small circle with that laser pointer on the ceiling. Now it's not a very big movement. You're going to keep everything in one line and you're going to notice sitting over towards one sit bone, coming over towards the back, other sit bone, and then sitting forward, keeping everything stable and steady. Now this is a whole lot of work for those kind of corset muscles around you, the transverse abdominals through the lower abdominals. Those are the, they're actually under three layers of the third layer of muscles. And those are the muscles that are so important for our posture, for the strengthening through the spine. A lot of the time we use the bigger muscles but the transverse abdominals is so important for our core strength. And then we're gonna go around in the opposite direction. Keep it steady, one circle to one cycle of breath. Notice where's the most challenging part for you. It might be coming back. It might be coming to one side or the other. One side is not necessarily the same as the other. That's a myth. So really turning inwards. Feel free to close your eyes and notice which parts of your body you're aware of within this movement. Again, those front ribs are knitted in. We're not moving through the ribs. Everything in the spine is as steady as it possibly can be. And that's how we get those under layer of muscles involved, not with big movements, but with small movements. Mm -hmm. Another two in this direction feet are rooted to the ground, really using that connection. And after the last exhale, we're going to come all the way back to center and that movement alone has woken up all those muscles, that, that kind of corset muscles, the transverse abdominals around in um, a horizontal fashion. Inhaling and exhaling Again, awareness to the lifting and lowering of the breath. Okay, we're gonna use this. So if you're sitting into the back of your chair, I recommend you come forward a little, just so you've got a little bit of space around you. Front ribs are drawn in, so we've got that connection inwards. And you might even notice if you draw that connection inwards, you're able to lengthen through the spine just a little bit more. This is the inhale, hands on the thighs. On the exhale, all we're gonna be doing is drawing the shoulders and head back in one line. Doesn't have to be very much. We're using the upper body as strengthening for those transverse abdominals. Inhaling to center, exhaling back. Chin is drawn in towards the chest if there's any strain on the neck and the breath. Keep the movement as fluid as you possibly can. If you want to add on, arms come out in front of you, thumbs to the skies if you're holding a box as wide or as small as you like. And you may notice with that, with the arms out in front of you, then you can come back a little bit further because that'll counteract the weight. If the arms reaching out is a lot on that inhale, you can kind of chug those elbows in towards your ribs and then extend the arms as you come back if that's more comfortable for you. And again, more is not better here. What we're trying to do is strengthen through those transverse abdominals and help support the spine. being very conscious of if there's a point where you go back and you lose the control or you're holding your breath, please don't do quite so much. Holding our breath is a really great way of 
being able to push the body a little bit further than it actually needs to go. So we want to keep the breath flowing. That keeps us mindful within the movement. Option to stay pulsing. Option next time you come back to stay three full breaths, fingertips extended, shoulder blades drawn towards each other. The heart is lifting up, but those front ribs are still knitting in. Steady breath flowing up and down through the spine. Last breath and allow that to settle in on an inhale. We're coming all the way back to center, relieving the hands, rolling through the shoulders anything that makes any sense to you here okay so from here option to stay sitting forward if you feel unsteady as we're going to be coming um, forward with our weight now as we were just going back you may want to shuffle into the back of your chair somewhat that'll give you more support hands on the thighs rooting to rise this is the inhale and the exhale using the hands for support, just a straight spine, we're coming forward. Chin can come in towards the chest to lengthen the back of the neck. Again, that flowing breath. Inhale, lifts you up through the crown of the head. On the exhale, as you take the breath down towards the base of your spine, you're coming forward. Now, if you need the hands for support, this is a great place to stay and pushing into the hands to draw you up. If you do not need the hands, then you can hover those hands and notice how that feels. You might take your awareness to the lower back, kind of from the lower back ribs all the way down through to the top of your pelvis. And notice that that's where we're kind of strengthening here only going as far as the breath is allowing you. If you want to add on, as we come forward, arms can extend any amount. They don't have to come straight. That is just simply going to add weight to strengthen a little more through the lower back. So focusing on what feels good for you. Inhaling and exhaling, steady and smooth, always as slow as your breath. If you're holding your breath, please come back to stillness, focus on the breath, and then rejoin the movement when the breath is present. Option to keep pulsing forward and back here. Next time you come forward, option to stay, three breaths, widening through the collarbone, so we draw the shoulder blades back. Front ribs are still knitted in here and the breath is steady and smooth. Inhaling and exhaling. Staying for the last breath. And then on the inhale, we're coming all the way back up to center. Take a big breath in. Exhale, releasing any tension. And just to relieve the spine here somewhat, we're gonna take the feet out a little wider. Sit further back or forward on your chair depending on how much support you need. And then we're going to roll through those ribs. And again, this is a controlled motion. So we're not throwing the body around. If at any time you wanted to pause, then you could stay in any place because that's how controlled the movement is slow and steady. Feel free to close your eyes or lower your gaze, soften your gaze, and notice your spinal column. Notice the places that feel challenging, the places that maybe feel good. Allow this movement to be your own. So you can get your shoulders, your hips, your head, your neck involved. You can circle as big or as small movements as feels good for you. At the end of the next exhale, or when you're ready, we'll pause and then go around in the opposite direction. Allow this to be as, as expressive as you choose for it to be. Inhaling and exhaling. Mm -hmm. See if you can enjoy this movement. Again, if the breath has stopped, Come back to stillness, come back to the breath, and then join in the movement when it feels right or not. 
On the end of the next exhale, we'll pause, come back to center, rooting to rise, heel toeing the legs towards each other. Big breath in, up through the spine. Exhale it out, settling down. Mm -hmm. And then from here, in your own time, we'll come down to the floor and I'll meet you there. Here we are down on the floor and we're gonna come all the way on our back and we're still gonna be focusing on the spine, on the movements of the spine, getting that as fluid as possible and building stability and strength. So coming all the way down on your back when you're ready, knees to the sky, feet to the floor, take any softness underneath you that you feel that you need. Readjust your pelvis so it feels like the optimal place for you and your feet are a comfortable distance from your seat. From here, Fingertips can rest on the top of your pelvis. Now, drawing the belly in towards the spine so much that the tailbone lifts a little from the sky, uh, from the sky, from the mat. Imagine a clock and imagine this being 12 o'clock. The pelvis, the back of your pelvis being a circle of the analog clock. So this is 12. Then on the exhale, we're going to take the tailbone close to the earth, lift up through the belly, and that's going to be six o'clock, closer towards your um, pelvic floor. And on the inhale, we're going to rock the pelvis, so we're coming to the lower back more, 12 o'clock and six o'clock. Imagine it kind of like the face of a clock. So we're rocking forward and back. It's not a very big movement. Okay, awesome. So from there, we're gonna come back to the central place of the clock, so neither 12 nor six, right in the middle. And then we're gonna shift over towards the right hip. And your knees are gonna sway a little bit, that's gonna be three o'clock. And then over towards the left, and that's gonna be nine o'clock on the clock face. So we're going from three, to nine. And if this is jumpy and jagged, no big deal. A lot of the time, this is the control is what we're after. So we're not after a big movement here. So we're just shifting from side to side, one side of the pelvis to the other, but it is a subtle movement. And you may feel a whole lot of sensation as this is happening. So make the movement as small as feels comfortable in your body. And after that, we're going to come all the way back to center. Nice. And then, drawing the belly in, we're going to come to 12, and then we're going to go around the clock, clockwise. So, from here, we're coming over towards the right hip, that's 3 o'clock, down to 6 o'clock, over to 9, and back up to 12. And we're going to circle around like a clock face on the back of the pelvis simply with the engagement of the muscles. Now you may notice that your feet are having a whole lot to do with this. So seeing if you can lighten the load of your feet and doing the same movement, but with only the help of your pelvis. This is a great place to stay right here. We're gonna come back to 12 and then we're gonna go around in the anti-clockwise. So we're coming over to nine, six, three, and 12. And once again, if you're putting a whole lot of pressure on your feet, seeing if you can lighten the feet, we're gonna add on to that in a minute. But anti-clockwise, noticing what's happening, steadying that movement around through the pelvis. And there's gonna be places that feel jumpy, choppy, no big deal. Again, if you're finding yourself really pushing into your feet as I am, then try and lighten that. Okay, and we're gonna come back to 12 and then come back to center. Now, if that was really challenging for you, then you're welcome to stay there and redo it. Otherwise, if you want to add on, readjust your pelvis, we're gonna lift 
the feet up off the floor, keep the knees and ankles in towards each other, and the knees are lifting up towards the sky. I find it more helpful here to have my arms at a cactus or a T just to kind of counteract that weight, but you can keep your hands wherever they're comfortable. We're going to do the same thing here. So we're going to draw the belly in and come to 12 o'clock and then 6 o'clock. 12 o'clock, there's a whole lot of engagement there, and 6 o'clock. And then when you're ready, we're going to shift over to 3 o'clock, and then over to 6 o'clock. And we'll do that a couple of times. And notice how much more challenging this is without the feet on the floor. Right, coming back to center, coming all the way to 12, and then we're going around in a clockwise direction. So 3, 6, 9, 12. And this is a whole lot more challenging. The knees are going to circle around as that happens. And keeping the movements as smooth and as steady as is possible. We want the control of the movements. The next time those that you get round all the way to 12, we're gonna pause and take that round in the empty clockwise direction. So we're circling as steadily and as smoothly as we can in circles around the back of the pelvis. And this is a whole lot of core going on here. Again, those ankles and feet are soft. Mm -hmm. Nicely done. Next time you come back to center, take the feet down to the floor, take a big breath in. Exhale it out. Okay, so if that was challenging, you're going to stay there. You can always come back to the first arm with the feet on the floor. Or next option, knees and ankles come towards each other, but the feet come up knee height. Steady the breath. We've still got that lifting and lowering through the spine. And then from here, coming to 12 o'clock. And on an exhale, we're coming down to six. And this may be a smaller movement. And then when you're ready, coming back to center, and we're shifting to three and over to nine. Okay, from here you can take anything you want or coming to 12 and we're rolling around clockwise direction. So it's still all hitting the 12, the three, the six and the nine. And this may be more challenging because the ankles are way up knee height. One last circle in this direction, coming all the way back to 12. And then back in the opposite direction, anti-clockwise, 12, 9, 6, 3, and back to 12 again. If you found that the breath is halting or you're holding the breath, please come back to a previous modification that was more manageable or take a break. Got two more. Again, controlling the spine. When you're ready, we're gonna draw those knees in, give yourself a little hug here, rock and roll from side to side. And then taking the feet all the way back down on the floor. Take a big breath in, all the way up through the spine. Exhaling it, settling it back down. Mm -hmm. So from here, taking the arms at the side of you. You can take robot arms if you like, or palms just um, at the side of your hips. At your own distance, palms turned down. 
readjust yourself so you feel comfortable. Feet are a comfortable distance apart, around about hip distance from most of us, or simply what feels better for you. On the inhale, we're lifting up through the belly. We've already been here as if we're tipping the tailbone down. And on the exhale, tucking the tail now as we draw the belly in. Inhaling as if I picked you up through your belly button. So about six o'clock and exhale, we're drawing the belly in. <laughs> so rocking forward and back, that should be familiar to you because you've already been there a lot. Okay, from here, on the next exhale, we're drawing so far down through the belly that the back of the um, pelvis starts to lift as we tuck the tail and on the exhale, we're drawing that down, peeling the spine down and the belly lifts up. Exhaling, pushing into the mat, peeling the spine up one vertebrae at a time and exhale, coming down just as slowly. So we're not concerned about how high the hips come here. What we want is the control of peeling the spine up and down one vertebrae at a time. You may even come up onto the back of the shoulders, but keep the breath steady. Keep the movement as fluid as you can make it. Once again, the control in the spine, that's what we're interested in. We inhale all the way up towards the base of the skull, exhaling all the way grounding down. Allow the breath to be your breath, so if that doesn't work for you, just slow and steady the breath. You can stay here or the next time the hips lift, staying there, three breaths. Again, this is not about height. This is about control, steadiness of the breath. And the front ribs are still drawn in, so we're not just poking them up towards the sky. Push through the foundation on the floor to keep that steadiness. And then on the last breath, one vertebrae at a time, coming all the way down and resting at the base. Taking a breath in, exhaling it out. And then from there, you're gonna draw one knee in and then the other and give yourself a little hug here. Rocking and rolling from side to side. From there, we're gonna take the feet all the way back down, but take them wide towards the edge of the mat. I'm taking the arms in a cactus or a T or another movement that feels good, anchoring the shoulders here. Back of the skull is grounded, and we come back to that lifting and lowering through the spine. And then we're simply going to take the knees to one side, inhale to center, and offer the knees over to the other side. Now any SI joint issues, you're gonna keep the back of your pelvis rooted to the floor and the knees are just going to come slowly to one side, but the opposite hip is not gonna lift. If you don't have any SI joint issues or it feels okay for you, you can start to take the knees all the way as close to the floor as they feel comfortable lifting up through that hip, opposite hip, and over to the other side. I'm getting that twist through the spine after all of that movement, keeping the shoulders rooted and grounded. If you want that twist all the way up into the base of the skull, gaze comes in the opposite direction from the knees. And the last option here is when those knees come to one side, then you stay there, three breaths, pushing the opposite knee down and away from the grounded armpit. Steady breath here. And then when you're ready, coming back to center and offering those knees over to the other side. 
And once again, that top knee pushing down and away, feeling that length through the side of the body, over the front of that hip flexor. And when you're ready, coming all the way back to center. From here, any last movements that you need in your practice, you can draw those knees in, rock and roll from side to side, you can take some knee circles, anything that feels good, and um, anything at all to relieve any tension or simply something that feels good in your body. No right and wrong here. Got a little time to play. And then when it feels right for you, coming down to your place of relaxation. So from there, it might be simple relaxation with the legs long. You can take anything, support underneath the legs. That's going to help the lower back if you've got any issues there. You can be on your side, on your belly, on your back. You can simply come to seated in a recline chair on your bed, anything that feels good. And as you get settled, I'm going to come up to a seat. So offering yourself as much comfort as you possibly can here. There's no right and wrong way to take relaxation. So it's all about making yourself as comfortable as you possibly can. When you're ready, taking a full breath in. Exhaling out through the mouth, maybe allowing your body to settle into that support underneath you and take another few breaths just like that. Mm -hmm. Allowing the breath to come back to its own natural rhythm. As you start to let everything settle in and settle down. And feeling your eyes softening, lowering, or even closing your eyes if you're comfortable. Feel the support underneath you. And imagine that spinal column getting really heavy and rooted into that support. As you allow your spinal column to get really heavy, imagine the muscles around it softening and allowing that to happen. And then not only your spine here, but your whole skeletal system, all of your bones from your skull all the way down through your ribs, shoulder blades, Shoulders and arms all the way down to the bones in the tips of your fingers and thumbs. Your pelvis. And all your bones from your hips downwards to the tips of your toes. Imagine those bones getting heavier. The joints feel easy here as the bones are held. As the muscles can start to let go and all the tension on your inner body starts to relax and release as well. Especially the muscles from your lower ribs all the way down through your pelvis, including your pelvic floor, allow that to soften. Allowing the muscles of your face to relax and release as well. And finally, allowing your skin to let go. As if all the cells of your skin just simply relaxed into ease. As if your whole container of your body could just soften like warm wax. Allowing the 
thoughts to release as well. Just watching them come and go with no particular attachment to them. And notice if there's something holding you back from allowing yourself to relax here. If there's a particular part of your body that you are feeling tension in. And take a few breaths with the intention, with your focus in that area. To start to relieve that area of any tightness, of any holding. Giving it permission from yourself to ease. thoughts or tension that have built up, allow it to soften and flow away as best as you can. You can stay here for as long as you like. Or if you would like to finish your practice, come back to the awareness of your breath, the rising of the inhale and the softening of the exhale. And imagine taking your breath all the way down to the soles of your feet, to the tip of your toes. And on the inhale, drawing that breath all the way up through your body to the crown of your head. And on an exhale, settling that breath all the way down through your body to your toes again. Starting to imagine that inhale is bringing energy in, infusing your body. And on that exhale, just releasing the breath out. Feeling as if you're filling yourself up for the rest of your day. On those inhales, imagining, sensing, feeling in your body that energy as you draw it in every inhale. And then allow that breath to start to expand into movement of your own choice to awaken your body. Ankles and toes, fingertips and wrists. And then from there, allowing anything to arise, maybe stretching wide or long anything at all that feels good to you. And take the next few moments to maybe roll to one side, take pauses on the way.
and drawing yourself all the way up to the place that you want to finish your practice. Hands resting in a place that feels good for you. Taking a breath in, exhaling, drawing your chin down towards your chest, focusing, imagining, sensing or feeling your spine from the base of your skull all the way down to the tip of that tailbone. I feel that within you, housing the central nervous system. Maybe notice in your day or week ahead, notice your spine a little more than normal. Notice everything that it allows you to do. Take a big breath of gratitude for your body here. Exhale that out. Feeling that gratitude flood through your body for taking you through all the years that you have had it. Thank you for joining me from my heart to yours. Namaste.